Good day. In this video, I wanted to cover clients. Um, clients for Terramud are necessary because you need some program that's going to handle the remote login to the game server. Um, Windows machines do have a built-in one. Uh, it's fairly painful in its default state, but um, it is usable. Uh, and I demoed that in the first video. Um, in simple terms, in order to use it, you have to actually wake it up. Um, on, win on a Windows machine, you would type Telnet as a search tool and then go to the turn, turn Windows features on and off. Um, by default, Telnet is turned off, but you need to put the little tick there. That will actually wake it up on a Windows machine. The interface then, when you click on the connect link, is handled via a shell extension. It looks a little bit like this, um, but when you start typing, you don't see what you're typing. You can fix that by holding down the control key and hitting the close square bracket that takes you to the telnet config screen you can then type set space local echo all as one word press enter and then press enter again to get back to your game screen now you can see what you're typing which is quite much better um, and I'm going to go in with my password in game then, um, on this Telnet screen, we can actually see what we're typing. So if I type look, um, I'm currently in sick bay. I can go out, um, north, and then up. And you can see that the game is perfectly playable. Um, the diff downside of Windows Telnet is that there is no way of configuring the window so that you can shortcut things and certainly the game needs you to type accurately and often verbosely. Not being able to cache any of that typing in here is a bit of a pain. And the magpies just attacked me. Hang on a sec. Okay, it's gone. Excellent. Was it carrying anything? I don't know. you got to watch out for magpie season. i got seven experience for... Uh, obliterating the magpie, but that's good too. I'll go back down to sick bay because that's where I'll start each of those times, each of the client explo explorations. So a basic will Windows Telnet um, has no features at all apart from providing a port into the game. You can wake up the local, e local echo so that you can see what you're typing. Um, certainly the initial demo video that I did, I didn't get local echo on, so you couldn't see any of the commands I was issuing, um, which probably in retrospect was a mistake, but meh, mistakes happen. Um, this is the most primitive way of accessing the game. Now on a Mac, there is also a Telnet service, and I'm pretty sure it has been disabled by default. You'll need to re-enable it as well, but its Telnet service is not much better than this as in it's just a command interface. You type your commands, you have no control or caching ability, no storing, no themes, no nothing. Um, and you are also limited to a single connection to the game. Interestingly, if I have one window open and I click on the connect, it will allow me to open a second window to the same game. Now I have two portals into the game. They can be completely separate. Uh, characters. You're allowed up to two characters in Terramud um, and oftentimes if you have a healing character for example they make good companions. Uh, you can walk around as a pair of yourself. Um, I'm going to close the second connection and we'll log out of this one to get out of the, mu out of the mud. Quit. Now, there are other options and I've downloaded three. Uh, I'm going to look at the relative strengths and weaknesses of all of them, I guess. The one that I have used forever is a thing called SimpleMoo. Now SimpleMoo is downloadable and from the website here, I'm pretty sure down the bottom I've got links to clients. These are the download links. So SimpleMoo will take you out to 4 .4, version 4.4 of SimpleMoo. Now I can't remember what I did to get it running. I'm pretty sure I had to run it in compatibility mode um, I dumbed the compatibility down to Windows XP Service Pack 2 and ran it as admin 
uh, before it would even run. So I've had anecdotal experience that not, it's not really very friendly for Windows 11, as in Windows 11 doesn't like running it, but I think you can brute force it if you are still able to access Windows compatibility mode. Um, I had it installed on my machine. I'm not actually sure what I did to reactivate it. Uh, I can't remember. I'm, I'm, if I'm honest, I really cannot remember what it was I did to reactivate it. But Simple Move as an interface makes a lot of sense to me. Each of these little windows is a connection to something. You have Quick Connect here where you set up address book entries. Let me show you how to do that. In the file menu, there is an address book and the address book allows you to specify a new site. I'm gonna call this Terramud. And once you're specifying a, a link, you then have to determine what sort of text-based service you are connecting to. As it turns out, there are lots. Mud is only one of them. Um, Mush, Mux, Moo, Muse, and Muck. They're all social worlds, uh, very different to a gaming world where you go in and do damage and things like that. They all were very popular back in the day. You could also dumb this right down to the dumbest terminal possible. I'm choosing not to. I'm going to go for a mud because it then makes some specification, it adds specifications which control how the commands are sent to the world and whether there's an enter key after them and stuff like that. In the host address, well, you've got the IP address, you've got tmux.wonko.info, I'm going to use teramud.wonko.info. The port is for port 4042, 4042. A port is just an access IP. Um, essentially, it's a way of getting into the server. And most services on a server have a port allocated to them. This is a Telnet service. Normally, Telnet goes through port 23. We decided not to use 23, primarily because bots attack port 23 via DDoS. Um, on a fairly regular basis, so we've decided to choose a, an obscure number in the off chance that we don't get DDoSed. Now the nice thing about, um, or one of the nice things about uh, SimpleMoo is that you can hardwire a character in here. So you can actually put in the name of a character and their password and automatically log them in um, when you choose this profile. I'm going to choose to do that, so I'm going to put PDub as my username and the character password. I changed it back to password for the purposes of this video. We'll change it back in game later to something else so that you can't hijack my character. Um, so I've got hardwired PDub and its password. When I do save, it now adds a new address item, address book item called Terramud. If I close my address book, that is now in the list here of things that I can click on. That's the one I just created, Terramud, and watch when I choose it. It will not find it. Interesting, Terramud.wonka. Oh, okay, the reason it didn't find it is because I made a typing mistake. That's all right, I can go and edit it. Right click, edit the properties of that. So instead of Terramud.wonka.inf, I needed an O at the end of that for wonka.info. Mistakes happen. Mistakes are opportunities. Good, good. Let's go and log into Terramud now. That should log in automatically as Peter. And after a moment of searching DNS resolution, pop, we're into the world. I pressed enter just to complete that process. And now I'm in as that same character. And you will notice that I now have a place where I type my commands, this bottom window down here. Um, is a place where I type my commands. The world is expandable, so I can have it taller and see more of the world if I want to see more of the world. It renders the color relatively faithfully. And it also renders monsters with a different color, which is sort of nice. Um, I'll go out and north and up. Now there are a couple of niceties here um, in that SimpleMoo allows you to um, allocate keys to do jobs. So up in the preferences, um, there are options, global preferences, uh, connection preferences, tools. 
a whole lot of really nifty stuff. Oh, I'm being attacked by a magpie again. Okay. Better try and kill the magpie. Nope, it's going to attack, kill me, but that's okay. Oh no, I got him. Okay. So I might go south. No, go down. Get away from the magpie. Oh crap, okay, I died. You get that. Um, so if I wanted to put key bindings here, so if I wanted to specify um, certain keys do certain jobs, then I can go up into the um, address book for the Teramud profile and I can go properties. And in the properties, there's a whole lot of tabs here which are really cool. Some of them contain really powerful functions. So for example, you can allocate your function keypad, that's the key, of the, the bunch of keys across the top of your keyboard to do particular things. So you might, for example, um, hard code the function two key to be look. Um, you might do the function 12 key to quit, for example. Okay, when you save those, those function key um, settings get saved permanently into this profile. And if you've got a pattern of keys that you use all the time, then this is one way of doing that. There are also things called timers. Now a timer is really useful because you may or may not be aware that the MUD will sign you out if it detects you haven't done anything in about five minutes. So one of the things I will often do is I will often put a timer in here that's just to stay alive in the game. Um, and to do that, I just need to issue a command in game. So I might add a timer and the name of it, might, I might call that um, heartbeat. You can call it whatever you like. The command, I'm going to just get it to look. Um, and it's, I, I'm going to get it to do it every 30 seconds. Now that would be really annoying. I'd probably push that out to three or four minutes um, in seconds. But I'm going to do it at 30 seconds just so that you can see that that's ticking correctly. I've saved that now in here and I will save those features. Um, so now I have a function key 2 that does a look. I just pressed the function key 2, it did a look. And in about 30 seconds it's going to repeat that automatically. I haven't touched anything on my keyboard for the moment. Um, I can go out and north. And in a moment it's going to go, it's going to look. Because it's going to have done that timer. So we're at the base of the stairs. I'm not touching the keyboard. It just did base of stairs again. So it issued a look automatically via a tick. Um, south and go back to sick. Um, and my function key 12 quits, which is sort of nice. Now there's some parts of battle I guess you might want to automate. Um, we try to discourage you from doing a whole lot of automation here because the aim here would be to um, play the game rather than script the game. Um, there are a bunch of events. So for example, you can actually sniff for the event uh, for an event like the presence of a handballer, for example. And if there is a handballer, then you could do something according to that. So you could add, a, add an event that contained text. Um, and based on that event, you could then trigger an action as well. Um, the notes section is useful. It's just like a notepad. You could write notes to yourself about that particular character, where they are, what gear they have, what quests they're currently doing, that sort of thing, which is quite nice. Um, from a gameplay perspective, you could have an address book entry for each of your characters in the game, and they could all have their own notes, which is also quite, quite nifty. Um, I like uh, Simple Moo only because it was the first mud client that I spent um, hundreds of hours using so I'm actually really familiar with it. That said I'm not particularly bound to it because I think I found a couple of better ones. Initially when I was trying to get a mud client working um, I downloaded Mush Client. So there's a, a link to Mush Client's download page. Mush Client, Mush is just another multi-user social um, social world, but it can be used for all manner of Telnet based stuff. It's a little more modern. It's uh, this version of 2016, whereas SimpleMoo, I don't think it's been um, worked on much. 
beyond the early 2000s. Uh, certainly its feature set hasn't changed since then and I don't think there are new versions of it anytime soon. The idea behind Mush Client, much the same as Simple Moo, is that it allows you to have a number of defined sessions. I'm going to go in on session number one. Um, I will quick, I can quick connect. I can click on this little thing up here, which basically says new connection. Where do I want to go? Dmux. Uh, what's the address? I can either get put in the IP address or the DNS address. Uh, let's go tmux.wonko. Dot info port 4000 now it's 4042 for reasons which make sense to me um, there are also other bits and pieces that you can include in here so there's appearance you can change the colors of the output you can put in triggers um, you can put in function keys and commands aliases keypads macros and so on like that um, you can save this profile and then reuse it, which is sort of nice. Um, the way it looks, this is how it looks. Uh, unable to get to tmux.wonko.inf. I cannot type. My typing is terrible. Say no, and let's try that again. Uh, tmux. And that will be tmux.wonko.in. Oh, 4042. Again, a mistake is just an opportunity to get it right the next time. As you can see, the world is as is. Now, one of the things about Mush Client is that the world and your commands are separated again. So you've got a little command window here. You can copy paste commands into here. So if you've got scripts, for example, I often would have a notepad full of commonly used commands that I really hate typing. And I can go and copy those and paste them in here, or I could put them as key bindings, um, or I could create aliases. An alias is essentially a key sequence. Like if I was to go at um, as a key as an alias, and behind that alias, I could specify well that's an attack teacher, for example, as a command, um, which could make gameplay a little bit easier for you. I'm going to connect via um, pdub and password and you can actually also ask the command that you just issued to stay in this window which is useful for battle so if you're wanting to attack a handballer and you need to keep issuing the attack handballer it's a pain in the neck to have to keep typing attack handballer um, so keeping the text in this little box is quite useful uh, there was a way of doing it i can't remember how to do it but i know that digging around in the options here gave me a few more um, ways of doing things uh, allows me to do key bindings, I think. It takes me back to the commands. Um, in terms of the keypad, we can actually specify, I've already got some things in here, for example, the keypad, that it, the numeric keypad automatically does north, south, west, east. It looks like a little compass rose around the five as the center point. But I've also got things like a slash defined to show us what's in my inventory, a single apostrophe for score and so on you can choose to change those key bindings at any stage but it's quite nice for example to be able to just type a slash and get an inventory um oh, that didn't work why didn't that work maybe there's a backslash nope okay there must be a way of triggering that not quite sure i haven't really played much with much client i used it in the emergency time when i didn't have um, simple me working. Um, oh, no wonder I took it took me ages to kill the crowbar. What am I actually wearing? I've got some of my uniform on, um, but I do not have my crowbar wielded. Wield crowbar. Always a good plan to actually be carrying and wielding the weapon that you're intending to use. So Mush Client is another option. Um, there are some really nice features in here and a bunch of people are using it because they can't get Simple Moo working. Um, Mush Client again is, I'm pretty sure, only Windows. So, so far I've only really shown you Windows Telnet, Simple Moo, which is Windows and Mush Client. If I dig out to Mush Client and have a look and see if there's a Mac version, I'm not sure whether there is. Um, keypads, triggers, timers, keyboard navigation, graphical bars for health and things like that, which is fun. Um, it's written in Lua. 
I think it is Windows only though. There's nothing here about um, downloading. Where's download, 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 mush client. Download mush client. Yes, okay, so it is freeware and it is Windows only by the looks of it. I think if I go download mush client on Windows 7, current version, doesn't look like there's a Mac version there. Uh, you can run it through Wine on Linux, which is Mac, but I would not suggest you do that because that will introduce a layer of lag, which will make that miserable. So, so far, nothing useful for a Mac user, but don't panic, we'll get there. Um, if I quit the game in Mush Client, and I don't want to save that session, that's fine. Another one um, is ZMUD. ZMUD is a paid MUD client, and certainly back in my early days of mudding, I paid for the license for ZMUD. It's a really powerful client. Um, there's a license fee for it. There's no freeware. It is crippleware. After 30 days trial, it will actually cripple itself and remember that it has crippled itself. Um, that's written by Zug, part of a whole collection of um, RPG text-based uh, interfaces. Very, very powerful. He's one of the first guys who built a really robust, um, battle-worthy client. Uh, so if you've got some money to throw at this project, you can go and go and get ZMUD. That's probably the cream of the crop, but I'm pretty sure ZMUD is also only Windows. Um, the one that I am gravitating towards is actually a thing called Mudlet. And Mudlet is pretty new, and its interface is fairly new, and it's cross-platform. So Windows, Mac, and Linux, uh, which might be something that interests you, um, if particularly if you are a Mac. Again, it was written in Lua, um, and it is an interesting client. I'll show you what it looks like when it's running. Um, there's Mudlet there. Uh, 2022, it's still comp copyrighted. So when you pop in, it comes up with a list of existing MUDs that are still live and kicking. Uh, I added TerraMUD by adding a new, and you had to actually type in um, the profile name, I'm going to call this tmux just to show you that the process is the same. And I'm going to go tmux.monco.info. I got it right that time, 4042. Um, don't you tick the secure. We're using just plain um, Telnet rather than SSH. So I think ticking that box will actually make it not possible for you to connect. Um, I'm not going to hard code a character name in here. I'm going to show you how it works. It also is connected to Discord. I haven't got a player Discord yet. I'm contemplating building one. Um, I don't know whether I want to duplicate all of the web services, all of the help guide and stuff onto a, onto a Discord. Um, but that is something that I'm contemplating anyway. Uh, open this profile on Muddle start, Muddle at start. So if you wanted to always run this one, then you could actually uh, just run it, uh, run the program and it will automatically run this profile. Um, so I'm going to connect via that. Um, yep. World of Terra Mud. So it's a little bit more modern. Um, and I'm going to put in PDAB. Watch the prompt. It stays there, notice. So in the place where I'm typing, the command that I just issued stays there which might be useful because you can reissue it by um, just pressing the enter key, I think. I'm gonna go and test that. Going out, going north, going up, and I'm gonna wait for a magpie to attack me, and then I'm gonna see if I can attack it by typing once and then pressing enter a number of times. Hopefully I won't get killed by it this time. Um, there is a bossy magpie at the top of the stairs that will spawn every now and then. Now, uh, there are some really, really pretty features here in the connect, triggers, aliases, timers, buttons, and the author has a full help site um, which gives you video tutorials on how to drive it. Um, so there's some really pretty features. There's a map feature which looks really promising. I've yet to have success getting it working though. Ah, cleric has arrived. No, no, no. A feral cat slinks in. Oh, crap. Okay. Okay, cat. Yep, so I typed it once and now I just press enter, enter, enter. That's cool. That saves me a lot of typing. 
Um, what did I get from that? Was there anything dropped by the cat? No, I would be surprised if it was actually carrying anything. Um, that's another one of the beasties that randomly pops in and around here because, let's face it, this place has been blown up, set on fire and infested with rodents, so you would expect to be attacked at some stage. Um, the interface feels very modern. It feels like it's fairly recently written, um, which is sort of fun. Uh, and I really like the button scripts and keys, the way they're set up. Um, the aliases and triggers are also really clever. Um, I'm going to put a timer on here, for example. I will add a new timer. Um, and that timer is going to be called uh, Pulse or something like that. Just so that every now and then it does it. The text, I'm going to do a, a who every now and then. And in the, I'm going to do that every five seconds. No, let's go 10 seconds. Clearly, that's not going to be very convenient. Um, if I knew how to program Lua, I could put Lua code in there as well. Uh, I will save that and I will activate that pulse. Now that's going to be ticking away every five, uh, every ten seconds. And let's see if it works. Now that I've got that activated, there's a little green tick there. Yep, okay. It just did a who, and in another ten seconds, it's going to do another who, I would guess. Yep, okay. So that little timer is ticking away there, which is quite useful. I will deactivate it. Uh, I think I can deactivate it by just clicking on it again to turn the tick off. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh oh, there's a vandal here. I don't know that I want to attack a vandal. Maybe I'll consider it. Um, I better get, make that window go away and consider the vandal. So you don't have to attack, you can consider. Uh, okay. Consider Vandal number one, because there are two. Uh, what am I seeing here? There are two Vandals. Uh, a little more dangerous than me. I wonder, let's just try it. Okay, Vandal 1. And I'm going to keep attacking. Notice I'm just pretty, pretty hitting the Enter key here rather than frantically typing at this stage, which is quite nice. Oh, cool. Oh, no. I almost overhit. So there's a, there's a problem. There are two Vandals in the room, and I pressed an Enter key one more time. Luckily, I was still in a cooldown. Otherwise, I would have hit the second vandal. He would have got cross, and I'm less than half, nearly less, than only half health. So that could have been a catastrophe. Um, one of the problems with scripting commands or having them in the, pro in the um, command bar is the overhitting, and I certainly don't want to do that. Um, what did he drop? Did he drop anything? I don't know. Let's have a look. Nope, there's just another Vandal. Um, I've gone 15, let's risk it. Five damage, that's nice. Ouch, he got me for four. Come on, you can do it. Five damage, another five, excellent. Okay, he was carrying a, a disposable lighter. Um, that's a useful item, I'm assuming, given that absolutely every place, monster, object, weapon, everything here has been created uniquely by me. Um, they all serve a purpose, uh, and I don't yet know what the lighter does. I might look at the lighter. A device used to start a fire. That could be a wand, actually. Oh, help. Wands. That could be a wand. Um, try zap item. So I could zap um, lighter and target it at somebody, possibly. That's interesting. Um, it's either that or it's a spell. I could try and learn it. Um, help scroll. Help scroll. Sorry, help. Help scroll. No help on that. Help magic. Nah. Okay. 
I'm sure there's a help file somewhere here that will help me understand what that is. Um, but I'm not going to spend time looking for that at the moment. I'm going to go down and back to sick bay. Where am I? Look, I've got to go south and go sick. Because I think I'll stay there for the moment because I am still very unhealthy. But that said, I did pick up a lighter and I must explore what that does. I have a feeling it is useful for some reason. The pencil case um, is also interesting. I fumbled, which meant that my crowbar is no longer in, I'm no longer equipped. So during battle, I didn't even notice that I had fumbled. And when you fumble, you, you unequip your weapon. And you've got to remember to put that weapon back on. Um, be polite, of course, and I will quit here. Um, it gives us some socket information and some stuff like that. That's quite a useful little game engine thing of a Bobby, uh, a client sorry and it is cross-platform and it has a whole lot of features so it's probably one I'm going to gravitate to because there seems to be some extra bits and pieces that you can load in here as I mentioned before there is a mapping facility I've not yet got that working but the map facility presumably allows you to annotate rooms as you find them and exits as you find them I'm not sure if after you've drawn the map it will allow you to speed run the map um, but that'd be handy if it did because then you could actually just click on places on your map and the interface would go from place to place. Now, I don't know if that's possible because I've yet to read the um, help here, but this client is really rich with help. Another thing I like about this client is if you've got a lot of screen, you can scroll up and current world is in the bottom part of the screen and it creates a pane above that allows you to go to historical world. So you can continue to play in this little piece of the world. You can move that around too, if you like. So you can have current world and a bigger piece of the, um, the stuff that's already scrolled past, which is <coughs> useful for scrolling back and looking at what's happened. Again, I like that feature and none of the other clients have it. Um, so that's quite new. When you finally get, get up to date with where you are, that little scrolly bit goes away. Um, yeah, that's Mudlet. Um, certainly I think you should be considering a client because playing this world um, without a client is uh, more challenging, I think. I've also added a new thing in here as well. I've added a video, so I'll put all the videos for help guides and things into that area. Um, you'll also find, for example, maps, if you didn't know. Uh, everything here was mapped. And I have given you sections of my master maps, not all of the maps and not all of the bits of each of the maps, but enough for you to get your get your bearings. So on a level three, for example, um, there's the quadrangle and there's the void that you could fall down through. This is the Campbell Center. The Campbell Center is called the arena in this game. I always imagined the Campbell Center would make a really great venue for cage fights to the death. So that's in fact what I do in there. Um, the arena is a, is a cage fight venue. That's only fun if you go in with your mate. Uh, going in by yourself, you're not actually fighting anybody. There are no foes down there for you to attack. You need to take your mate down and, and you can attack each other in your own little custom combat cages, which is sort of fun. Um, you take less damage down, down there. Uh, your armor might take a bit of a beating, but that can be fun sometimes too. These little annotations on rooms are sometimes useful for you to know uh, things. I'm not going to explain them. That's up to you. That's level three, level four, uh, level five. That's the Campbell Center floor. And you come into the Campbell Center through the, um, uh, there's, a, there's a way in up near the, uh, uh, the undercoft. Um, where you have to go in and around, and then you get get um, combat cages and th combat cages and things like that. Uh, that's the way in through the um, the undercoft. Most of these maps are drawn north up and are faithful. So that's a beginnings of a Tennyson map. It's 
a very small section of the Tennyson map, but it will give you an idea that the main oval is actually a maze um, and quite dangerous. Um, St. Joe's is laid out pretty well the same way that the buildings are laid out. But I'd come there for some of the areas. Um, I will not be publishing other maps, primarily because the moment I give you a map, you know where all the doors and exits are, and I want you to work that out. Um, that's part of gameplay. Uh, that will be when this vid where this video finishes. I'm hoping that it is useful. Uh, suggestions for other videos, just email me. If you need other things explained, I'm perfectly happy to consider giving that a go. Um, play safe, uh, kill nicely, be polite in world, and remember typing for your life has never been as important as it is in Terramud. Enjoy!